Darren here with Creativity Unleashed and in this video I just wanted to talk about air filtration for your compressed air system. I live here in the tropics and the humidity is really high and the temperatures are often very high which are not beneficial to getting clean dry air out of your system. If you've ever noticed like when you pull the trigger on your air hose and you're seeing like streams of water shooting out definitely makes huge trouble for plasma cutting, painting, powder coating, sandblasting, you name it, it's going to cause um, a lot of negative effect to whatever you're doing. So you you possibly have seen one of these, they're a brass filter that has a swirl system in it that causes the air to swirl around this um, special material brass filter that um, causes the moisture in the air to condense and um, formed at the bottom and you're able to empty this very um, easily. This one happens to have a regulator which is convenient for if you're setting up like a separate workstation and want to be able to control your air pressure. Um, but these will eventually get um, an oil film built up on them and may not want to be um, uh, filtering very well and collecting the water out of the air. And in that case, you can take them apart and clean them with like Dawn dish soap. We, at the end of this video, I'm planning to show you how to uh, maintain your filters um, so that you keep them um, working well. Um, but this is um, something I've been using for a while. I just got another one because I'm putting a new setup in. This is an oil separator um, filter and a desiccant dryer. Um, this uses um, desiccant, which is um, little, these little bead pellets that come blue and as they absorb moisture they become pink um, when they're fully saturated. Um, and you don't have to throw them out, you can actually take them out and um, put them in like a dehydrator or an oven or something at the right temperature, dry them out and reuse them, um, which can um, end up saving money over time. Um, so we'll go into some details, this also removes the dust and um, contaminants that can be in the air supply or in the tank of your compressor and some of that. Now one of the things is if you're in the tropics, these um, after doing um, some volume of air, depending how well um, the rest of your system is doing is separating water um, or the temperatures outside, also if it's really hot, you know, it tends to hold a lot more moisture in the air and so these have a hard time removing the moisture and in that case you're probably going to need a refrigerant air dryer. I ordered one some time ago for my CNC plasma system. Should be getting in pretty soon and we'll do a video on that as well. Um, so that will be my first part of my filtration system will be a, um, a uh, refrigerant air dryer. I got a more industrial brass type filter here. This is a lot bigger and this is going to be part of my um, system as well. Um, but uh, when you're doing something like sandblasting, it seems the volume of air you need to dry would make it where you're usually going to need a refrigerant air dryer or a very big desiccant dryer. I'll put in a link to someone who built a very big desiccant um, system at home pretty easily for doing sandblasting and it worked quite well for them. Um, but yeah, let's go into details of this, um, get it hooked up and show you guys how it works and um, help you guys out. One recommendation I have for you is when you're making all of your threaded connections, instead of just using Teflon tape, it can be really great to use one of these pipe thread sealants. Um, it's instantly fast, just put it on, screw it together, and I've had no trouble with leaks, whereas occasionally with Teflon, you might get a leak after you have everything together, and it's a bit frustrating having to tear things apart and try to fix a leak. All right, so we got all the fittings hooked together, um, pipe in between it, and then a quick connect on this end. Um, so I guess we're just ready to add the desiccant into the filter. You just grab it here, pull this down, twist over, this comes off. This here, just wiggle it loose. Has an O-ring that goes around it. Make sure not to get the desiccant inside of here.
So apparently don't um, overfill them, leave about a half inch space of desiccant. So it looks like they put a little bit more desiccant than will actually fit in one of the bags. So I'll put the rest in like a Ziploc or something. So I'm in the utility room here where I have my air compressor. Here's a two and a half horsepower, 10 gallon air compressor. I'm going to be building um, a much bigger one um, for the CNC table, but I just have a brass filter on here and the hose running out. And temporarily here, I have the filtration system screwed to one of my workbenches. You got the hose connected so I can just connect into it and use it for whatever I need. So you can see after running air through a good most of the day, the desiccant has um, absorbed quite a bit of moisture and it's ready to be dried out. So for drying the desiccant, I just have this little tin like pie plate. I'm just going to put this desiccant into the um, air fryer, which is also a dehydrator. So turn the thing on, we're going to dehydrate, and then we're going to go to 135 degrees. It recommends not to go over 140 with the desiccant. And it only takes about an hour and a half or so, but this only goes down to two hours. So we'll do it for about an hour or so. And um, you can see that just, we'll show you when it's done. It's been in for an hour and a half. And you can see it's all nicely dried out. So after a lot of use, of course, the brass filter can get a little oily. So it just comes right off. You can see in the bottom there, there's like a little bit of almost oil. Let's take a paper towel in there and wipe that out. And then here, this will just screw off and you can wash this with a little Dawn dish soap is what I found works well to get rid of any oil that could be sticking to it which can cause it to not work as well. So as you can see there's quite a bit of gunk in the bottom of this. One thing to remember is do not wipe the grease off of the o-ring, it's um, like a petroleum jelly knife. So, this, so once you get this on, you just give it a twist and it clicks on. And then this just slides up back over it and slides into place. Put on your retainer at um, about a 45 degree angle and then it will just slide over and click on and you're done. So if you're wondering how well does this actually work, well, it really does. It works quite well. I've been doing a lot of plasma cutting, quite a lot of painting, and it works well. Um, after three, four hours of running air through it, depending your humidity and temperature and all, you might have to dry your desiccant out. But um, it's, it's got a huge amount of water out of the air, and I've noticed my consumables have lasted way longer than they ever did, and my cut quality has improved with plasma cutting, and so it really does work. Um, ideally, if, if, if you're doing this all the time, you might want to get a refrigerant air dryer and some other more expensive systems. But if you're just doing this um, on a budget or if you're um, um, willing to spend the time to dry the desiccant out, it can work really well. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. I definitely learned a lot in the last few years with um, different air filters and stuff.